<sighs> so guys, I've been thinking of how to do this video and I finally, I guess, as you can see, I found the best way to do this video. So for those who don't know, a quick backstory, this channel Fashion Finesse began when I started to look towards modeling. Uh, I started getting into fashion, clothing. I started talking about the modeling industry at first. And then I eventually became a model myself. And that's where I really used the basis of the whole handsome men's game. For those who are new to the channel, I basically talk about handsome men's game. And just to summarize that, if you're an average looking guy, when you're approaching a woman, you probably need to use more of your mouthpiece. If you're a handsome guy, I think you should be more laid back and reserved and not talk too much because a lot of handsome guys talk their way out of the cat. That's basically my whole, the whole philosophy. That's, that's basically the whole philosophy of handsome men's game. So in order for me to talk about that, I wanted to actually have some borrowed authority. And my borrowed authority was the model industry. So, you know, you can have a lot of guys talk about handsome men's game, this, but apart from your own head, like how do we really, how can we verify your handsome? So, you know, getting signed to a modeling agency was a was a, a big push in me to, to making that type of content. And I originally was modeling when I was 18. And that was for an agency called Brother Models in uh, Manchester. So, yeah, and I, ended, I didn't go through with that because at the time I was just modeling strictly for money. And I, I wasn't aware of the industry whatsoever. And I already kind of thought the in modeling industry was weird. I heard a lot of stuff about it so when I wasn't getting paid straight away because I didn't under, I didn't understand things like building your portfolio a portfolio is basically a bunch of test shoots that you give to the brands you know for them to pick what model they want so they'll see each of the models portfolios uh, you know the test shoots and stuff and then they'll pick what model they want to model their clothes I didn't understand the model industry how it works I just thought you get signed money 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 right and as soon as I didn't get that, I basically said, fuck you guys when I was 18. I was very <laughs> ungrateful, but I'm going to explain why I was ungrateful at the time as we get into it. But yeah, that's that's just basically how this channel came about, you know, from the modeling industry. And I, I made this channel when I got out of prison as well. Uh, I think some of you guys know a bit about that. But yeah, so these videos are basically about me getting dropped from my modeling agency and how it came about, what I'm going to be doing moving forward. And yeah, just asking some of you genuine supporters, not just the people who pop in and out. Some of you guys who genuinely been supporting me from day one. Some of your advice too, moving forward. So essentially, I started out with this agency when I got out of prison. Uh, I was essentially looking for a way to make money. And I thought to myself, when I was scrolling on my phone one day, why not just walk into an agency, right? I was feeling like going to do something like, for instance, today. I went on a walk, you know, it's one of them days where you just want to go do something. So I thought, why not use my time to go and walk into an agency? And like I said, I was already modeling at 18. Well, I didn't uh, do any paid shoots or anything, but I got into the industry. I got into an agency. You guys can research brother models if you want. Uh, I got into the industry. So I was like, OK, I clearly have the looks to get into modeling. And I'm always told, you know, you have a very strong look when I go out into public. You know, people do stare and stuff like that. So I was like, you know. Let me just walk into an agency. I walked into the first agency. This was Nemesis Models, quite a big agency in the UK. And I didn't really feel the vibe whatsoever. Uh, they kind of like, I kind of felt like a test dummy or something, you know, like a mannequin. I didn't really feel no soul in the building. So I kind of thought, okay, they're probably not going to pick me to model with them. So why not just have more options, you know, in terms of feedback? Like, not, don't just be waiting on one agency to hit me back up. Why not have multiple agencies hit me back up if that's possible? So I went to a second agency, which was the agency I got signed to. This is Boss Models. You guys can go research that if you want. Uh, I'm not really, I'm not here to shit on the agency or, or any, anything like that. So I'm not going to say anything of that sort. So I went in there. Uh, they were, you know, they had quite good eye contact with me. Uh, they were talking to me and whatnot, you know, and they basically said, let me get someone from the team that deals with male models to kind of talk to you and see if we should go ahead with you. Essentially, they did that, uh, took a couple of pictures and they got back to me right on the spot and said, yeah, we'll go We'll go with you. We'll sign you to a, a, a contract. So I essentially went upstairs and I signed the contract. I felt, I felt great. 
Because, guys, you got to realize I was coming out of prison at the time. So I really needed to get on my feet. I was living in a homeless hostel as well. And in that homeless hostel, I'm seeing, like, um, like he's, this white guy, like, he, he, he's doing hard drugs and stuff like that. There was this couple that upstairs, the room above me, they used to do domestic violence every day. And then the room next to me, there used to be this old man that was just kind of off his rocker. He used to just be singing in his room. That used to drive me crazy. I used to have to, I remember I had to, I had to go to sleep listening to rain sounds and stuff like that just to block out his noise. So it was like hell in there. So I essentially, I was feeling good. Like this is a chance, this is a step forward. So I got signed and yeah, from there I told my mother. Uh, and yeah, I was feeling good at the time. So I eventually ended up, you know, using my experience from the last time I was a model at 18 and, you know, learning from my mistakes then. So I realized, okay, this time we have to be patient. Let's build the portfolio out. You know, I was even investing, you know, sometimes they would hire uh, certain photographers to where you'd have to pay them, you know, and uh, it can either come out of your own modeling check or you can pay them. So I just paid them. You know, I was investing in my career and whatnot. So I was really going for it this time. And yeah, just I'm not going to give you my whole like story modeling. I was just modeling. At first, I wasn't getting any big shoots. Once I, bu I built the portfolio, I started booking gigs here and there. You know, £200 here, £200 there. And to be fair, compared to everyone else who I was talking to, I was actually booking quite well for a new face. A new face is someone who's just basically new to the, you know, you're not, you're not a profession. You're not, obviously, you're a professional, but you're not like an established model. You're just a new face doing jobs, right? So I was getting like £200 for a shoot, you know, get pictures taken of you for like, what, 30 minutes, an hour, £200 for a shoot here, and then I'll get like £400 for a shoot there. But as I was going on, the booking started becoming more consistent to the point where I can actually consider this income. You know, it wasn't just here and there, it was actually com becoming consistent. I was getting more of those £500 uh, checks and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, it was good. And... I was also starting to build my confidence because at first it was like nerve wracking, uh, not because I'm like scary or anything, it's just, you know, I'm quite masculine, you know, I'm not a, a guy who's like, I'm very to myself and I'm not like, you know, I don't, I don't even know how to really say that, so I'm just going <laughs> to keep that to myself, you know, we live in crazy times, but yeah, it was kind of weird for me posing in front of a camera and stuff at first, so not saying posing is feminine or anything, but like when you're kind of a man's man, like when you're posing for uh, women in the, and women are in the back and stuff, it can kind of feel a bit weird. So I was breaking out of my shell and I started realizing, what am I being weird for? Like, this is what you're nervous about. Like, you're posing, you're, you're being paid to take pictures. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, so I started becoming more comfortable um, in front of the camera. So essentially time was going on, time was going on. I'm getting more money. You know, I'm doing um, shoots for the Manchester City football team. Uh... I did a shoot for like some like uh, some store, um. So yeah, the shoots were uh, were doing good. I was going to castings for high end fashion brands as well, and it overall is going good. It was going good. So let's just get to the to the meat of the things. The meat of the thing is that same. I don't know. But guys, there's not gonna be no edits, none of that type of stuff. So essentially, uh. I was just chilling there one day and I got a phone call and it was one of those we need to talk type of phone calls. So you can already expect like, what's this about? Like, and I'm not gonna lie, growing up, I go into a lot of trouble. So I already know them type of phone calls. Like we need to talk, you've done, you know? So I'm like, damn, what did I do? I'm not saying I was living wrong at the time. Like this is the cleanest I've ever lived in my life and I'm gonna continue living that way. So I'm not saying I was doing anything wrong, but I was like, what could I have done wrong possibly? I was thinking. And essentially, I got told, I'm just going to get to the meat of the things, meat of the thing. I'm, I got told that my agency would have to, uh, what's that word, uh, sever, no, it's not, it's, not, it's not that. Basically, they would have to separate themselves from me. They would have to um, no longer represent me as a model because of a video that came out. Now, this video that came out was a video from, like, it's actually crazy. It was a video from about three years ago. Like, three years ago, damn near. And the video was essentially me talking about Jewish people. So, yeah, it was, the video was about me, to, was me talking about Jewish people. And let me get into the meat of why I was talking about Jewish people at the time. 
and I don't have these views anymore for anybody wondering. But at the time, I was going through a lot of stuff mentally. You know, I've been in and out of foster care. I've had quite a bad relationship with my mother, so my mental health wasn't the best. Uh, I was living in a, in a place away from home where I was working uh, a job that I hated. You know, I was working with like mentally ill people, so they would be very nasty people. So my head wasn't in a good place at the time. I was just making enough to survive. Uh, I was sleeping on the floor, essentially. Like, I'd uh, I'd have this air mattress to where you pump it up and, like, 30 minutes later, it's on the floor. And then you got to pump it up again and then it's on the floor. So, essentially, you're sleeping on the floor. And this was supposed to be my my mother's friend. You know, my mum recommended uh, me to go stay with them. You know, me and her were going for it. So, yeah. Um, I was essentially sleeping on the floor, so I was just going through it. Like, and the people I was living with weren't good people. Also, they were quite bad-minded people. They weren't um, clean-hearted people either. So I was just, I was essentially in hell in my mind. Um, but that wasn't the reason I was just talking about Jewish people. Around this time, I was doing a lot of uh, self-education on Black history, and upon my realizations, I was filled with anger. You know, as a black man, when you really go and educate yourself on the things that have been done to you through your history, it, it can infuriate you. You know, when you start hearing that, you know, people, um, I want to make this graphic or anything, but people would hang you off of trees, cut your balls, keep them for souvenirs. Like, when you start educating yourself as a black man on your history, it can really, like, infuriate you, you know. So, I was doing a lot, a lot of education, so I was very you know, against a lot of people, you know, that basically weren't black, uh, not just white people, but like, you know, Arabs, I was finding their part in slavery, I was, I, I was really educating myself, not just the surface, surface level stuff you learn in school, you were a slave for 400 years and that's it, no, I was really going deep with the knowledge, um, and then I stumbled across knowledge where it came to the point of um, being a Hebrew, and I I was stumbling across a lot of information and I essentially realized that and this is what this is what I'm, I was thinking at the time. I'm not saying this is what I think now, but I essentially was realizing like this is the way I was thinking like Jewish people have stole my whole culture essentially. That's the way I was thinking at the time. So this also um infuriated me. And essentially I was mad. I was mad because I almost felt like I've been duped, you know? Like, the rest of black people are asleep, and I'm the only one who's awake right now and seeing what's going on. Because I was reading up about some stuff about, like, um, Jewish people. They were originally, like, from, I don't know, what's it called? Like, some place in, like, Russia or something like that. And then they converted to Judaism, so, and then basically hid the history of black people being the original Jews. So this is what I was realizing, I, I, um, seeing at the time. Once again, it's not what I'm saying now, but this is the stuff that I was reading upon at the time so essentially this was making me real mad so i had a channel at the time to where it was a spiritual channel you know i was essentially not um on the path of the lord uh, i was born christian and the reason i wasn't on the path of the lord anymore i was essentially a satanist i'm not gonna lie uh, i wasn't doing anything like crazy or like sacrificing anybody or anything like that but i was you know doing the magic um Studying magic, studying the occult, studying the likes of Alistair Crowley, um, just going in deep with the Satanism stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and the reason I, I went off the path of the Lord was because me and God have always had a close relationship. You know, even when I stopped going to church, I would always go to the park bench, sit there, and I'll talk to God about my problems in my life and I pray. I always kept a close relationship with God. But the reason I started separating more from God is because. My mum and her sister, which is who I live with, they were, my mum's sister would go to church every week. But I'm telling you, she was one of the worst people I've ever met. She is one of the worst people I've ever met in this life. My mother too, you know. So I'm like, you people are Christians, but yet you're such a bad representation of Christ. Like, so this is what all Christians are on. This is the way I was thinking at the time. Like, this is what all Christians are about, like. You people are really fake. You're like, so this Christian stuff must be fake. That's the way I was thinking at the time because let me just explain something. If you're, a, if you're a Christian, which I am now, you have to always be, you have to be a good representation of Christ because 
if you're a bad represent representation of Christ, talking to people about Christ, it's going to make them not believe in the religion. Whereas if you're a good representation and they see blessings and you, they see you shining and glowing, it's going to make them believe in Christ even more. So essentially, I, was, I, be I believed in God, but I was like, a lot of these Christians like, and then, yeah, I was also learning about, you know, the whole white Jesus and, you know, Christianity was used against us in slavery, you know, to, to indoctrinate us. Black people weren't really into the Christian stuff before we were enslaved and it was beat and whipped into us. So I was kind of um, start realizing that. But also I was looking at my mum and her sister like, you people are terrible people and you're Christians. Is this what you're all like? Like, nah, nah, I'm good, you know? So I was going into the path of Satanism, you know, I was wearing, I would, I'll be wearing Baphomet chains and stuff like that so yeah um i was off the path of christ so essentially i was on the spiritual stuff so i had a spiritual channel just to get back on point i had a spiritual channel to where I, I, it started off real positive i'm not gonna lie like it started off with good stuff like it, it wasn't like no hate towards anybody it was all unity you know let's escape let's escape the matrix this was like three years three four three four years ago as well by the way guys it was all about let's escape the matrix let let's 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 grow together. It wasn't no hate. It was actually some stuff you can get behind even now. But then, as I was educating myself more on Black history, it started becoming Black Power. You know, fuck the whites. Um, it started becoming more that type of stuff. Uh, you know, that type of rhetoric. You know, like white devils, all that type of stuff, right? Like white people have no souls. You've probably heard this type of talk before. You know that type of talk. So that's what my channel started going towards. Now, one of my videos I posted on that channel was something about Jewish people and it was basically like, it wasn't a long video. That's the crazy thing about it. Like, I wasn't just, Jewish people was probably the people I talked about the least. Like, I barely really even talked about them like that. Um, but I said one time, like, um, I want, once or twice, I said, like, they stole our culture. Jewish people are the fake Jews, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck them. And essentially, someone was recording at the time. Now, I don't know if someone thought, like, yeah, this guy's going to be big one day. He's going to be somebody one day. Let me record it to have it against him. Because I don't see why else you record it. I had like 300 subscribers. I'm saying like, why, why, why would you record that, you know? So, I don't know. Maybe you saw some potential in the kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me not say the kid, the man. You know what I mean? But maybe, maybe he saw some potential in me or something. That I was going to be somebody. So, he said, let me record it. Now, I have like, this isn't really too important. But it's a little bit side note. I have like two conspiracies of who it could be. I think it's either an old friend who was watching my channel at the time because I used to promote it on my social media, the channel. So maybe he subscribed and he was like, oh yeah, I'm going to get you one day because I kind of stopped talking to a lot of like, my old friends. I, I cut them off, you know, um, not because they were like, I was like fucked up, but they were generally not for me, you know, so I cut them off. So I, I ever think it was one of them or it could be the agency I was working with at 18 because when I, when I stopped fucking with them, I essentially went on YouTube and I was talking about them. I was saying the model industry is demonic. These people are weird. These people are this, that. I once again, I, prom I would promote it on my page. So maybe, you know, someone from that agency, because I, I stopped talking to them too. They were texting me when I left, like, come on now, don't do this. Like, you can have potential being a model. Like, don't just quit because you're not getting paid straight away. So, but I ignored them. So it could be that, like, someone was recording it from that agency uh, just in case I was a model again, so essentially they probably they may have okay, bam, he's he's modeling again. Let's send this video, old video to this new agency to show them who they're working with. Like this is what he was saying, even though it's like, come on now, that's three four years ago. Like why not show them who I am now? You know what I'm saying? But that's why you gotta be careful of your digital footprint. But uh, yeah, so that's my two conspiracy of, of who it could be, or just a hate and ass family member because I have a, a lot of hate and ass family members. So you know, yeah, and I put my my modeling agency in my bio because that's one of the requirements when you sign to an agency to put it in your bio so yeah um essentially that's what happened they sent that video of me talking about jewish people to my new agency uh, i'm guessing they just saw my instagram bio and they saw the new agency so they sent it to my new agency and um yeah so that's that's basically how they got the video they basically called me, said, um, they asked, I don't know why they didn't just cut me off straight away. They were asking, like, what was your mindset at the time? So I thought, I thought, I thought at first they were just going to talk it through with, with me, see what I was going through, see if I, if I think that way now and then move forward. But no, they were just asking to ask, I guess. And they essentially said, yeah, 
will have to separate ways with you, you know, t um, sever ties with you, severe ties, sever, 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 I don't even know, how do you even say that again? They'll have to separate ties with me and whatnot, sever, sever ties with me, I think that's how you say it, come here if, that, if that's how you say it, but yeah, they said they'll have to do that, so yeah, that essentially, that's essentially what happened, um, I ended up getting all my payments, you know, because I had some payments that I would do, they ended up paying me for those, and yeah, they ended up separating ties with me. So that's essentially how I got dropped from my modeling agency. Um, quite a backstory, but yeah, that's essentially how I got dropped. And this was quite uh, a couple months ago. Uh, I still carry myself as a model because essentially I didn't get dropped for my looks. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I, I got I got ugly or something and they said, yeah, we have to drop you because you got fat or because you, you're not good looking anymore. They dropped me because of my mouth and what was coming out of my mouth three, four years ago. Now, so I do carry myself as a model still because, you know, it's not like my looks change or anything. Now, I do believe, even though it's not too, this isn't too important, but I do believe if I was someone more popular, they would probably tell me to do what they do with everyone else who talks about Jewish people or something. Can you make an apology? But I think because I wasn't popular or anything like that, they said, all right, yeah, just... You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we can we can dispose of you because you're not popular. You're not a celebrity. Because I because look what they do to the other celebrities who say stuff about Jewish people. You know, and once again, I do want to um, say right now that that stuff that I was saying was wrong. I don't, you know, you know, just in case anyone's thinking, what well, what well, do you still know? The, the stuff I was saying back then was wrong. You know, like I said, I wasn't um, godly at the time. It was wrong. You know, and it's not right. And I've learned from my ways. Like, like when I got when I went to prison, I was in a cell for 13 months. I had a lot of time to reflect and be a, and become a better person, so it's definitely wrong. Um, but yeah, I do believe if I was like a celebrity or someone more popular, they would just tell me to do an apology video and that's it. But yeah, so that's really it where I'm at right now with it. And I could potentially go to another agency, but they could potentially, the person who's hating on me or, you know, has something against me they could just send that video to that agency and then send it to that agency now i could be up front with an agency and just say hey i've said this before about jewish people and you know i may be able to find the agency that's like okay we're willing to work with you you know people make mistakes you know that's how it should be really you know like people do make mistakes you shouldn't be like holding people to their mistakes and it's like but i'm not even stressed because i know i'm gonna be good regardless in this life like and i know that agency is gonna be it's, they're gonna be looking silly you know what i'm saying i understand it completely like i, I get it but at the same time, I do believe if I was a celebrity or something, they wouldn't have just, you know, said bye, basically. So, you know, I think they made a mistake, honestly, you know, because I'm going to go crazy in this life, you know. So I do believe they made a mistake. But, yeah, I could go to another agency. But right now, I kind of want to just focus on YouTube right now. You know, right now, I'm just trying to focus on YouTube. I got a lot, lot of other stuff going on as well. Like, that's not my only stream of income. Like, you never want to be in a position in life where someone can just and your stream of income is just done you know so that's not my only stream of income but yeah what do you guys you know what do you guys think um moving forward i should do like you think i should entertain other agencies uh do you think i should just focus on youtube i mean if my mom will ask some of you that question i know i got some haters watching me so they'll, they'll just say yeah just focus on youtube focus on you we don't want to see you know what i'm saying but for the genuine ones who support me what do you guys honestly think i should do but yeah guys like that's essentially it like i wanted to just be here come here be as open as possible be as genuine as possible and just tell you guys uh, my story and how i got dropped from my modeling agency um i don't take this as a l or anything i take it as a lesson because it's actually crazy like i got like i said i got dropped a couple months ago and i think a couple months ago i was on like 5k subscribers now i'm at 13k i'm about you know what i'm saying monetize on my second channel um like i got a lot of other stuff going on so i was able to put my energy that i was putting into modeling because they'll have you travel and stuff like that i was able to just put it all into what i've got going on and building my personal brand so but if there's anything i leave you guys with always be careful of your digital footprint even me i kind of still go crazy right now about these bitches right you know what i'm saying someone could probably clip some shit i don't said about one of these bitches like she's a fucking thought she's a 304 and you know what i'm saying and then you know what i'm saying so you have to you have to be careful of your digital footprint. Let me give you some advice. Be careful of your digital footprint because you never know if you've got someone watching you, someone who doesn't want to see you do well, recording everything you say. You might have five followers, bro. Out of those five followers, there could be a hater who doesn't want you to succeed and waiting for you to slip up and say the wrong thing and just hope. And there's some weirdos in this life because I was fucking with this one girl. I was literally fucking with her. 
you know what I'm saying, right over there. And I looked through her snap camera roll. It's that girl that I mentioned who had a video of someone on a live and herself on her phone. She has like nudes of like girls and stuff when they were in like high school. And I'm like, what type of hate do you have to have in your heart to still be keeping this stuff against these girls, bro? Like you a weirdo for real, you know what I'm saying? So it's like people are weird out here. People, you know what I'm saying? Like people will hold stuff and wait and wait and wait just for the right time to use it against you. So you never know. Like people are weirdos out here. So yeah, be careful of the digital footprint, bro. Yeah. That, that's why I, also if you guys know it's like i talk about I'm, i've been helping a lot of people with modeling advice like i created an ebook which is in the description it should be in the pinned comment as well i created an ebook to um help guys get into modeling when you guys comment in my comment section i, I get back to a lot of you in my dm bro i'm on a lie i think i get back to damn near every single dm i get like all my dms i'll be getting back to you like i'm not too big for for any for any of that you know so really and truly it's like now all right I'm not a hater, you know. Let me if I if I'm not a model right now, let me help other people get into modeling. Let me help them make thousands like I was making off of modeling. Let me help them bust up and you know come out of a dark place that they may potentially be like I was in a dark place in a homeless hostel and I got into modeling, you know. So yeah, guys, that's essentially it. Um, once again, let me know what you think. In the comment section down below and yeah, have a great day.